from a charity called Craft Aid International and if you're watching this video it's probably because you've bought or been given a, one of these very beautiful uh, vintage button tree kits and I'm going to show you how to transform it into one of these beautiful pictures. So firstly detach your box from your frame which will have come with the kit and uh, take out the exciting contents. So let's put that there. Now you will have some instructions in your kit um, so you may just be able to read those and that'll be fine. Uh, but also you've got this lovely video to talk you through as well. You'll also find an exciting craft aid leaflet which will tell you all about the people that we work with, the people that we serve and uh, some of the different things that we do in different parts of the world. So have a look at that too. So first thing you want to do is take out your canvas and this has been hand painted by differently able people who come to our craft sessions during the week. I think this particular one has been painted by a young man called Carl who comes to our weekly sessions in Leeds. And then you've got some other exciting elements here. You've got some vintage buttons. These are genuinely vintage buttons. Basically, I give a lot of talks about our work overseas, particularly um, to people anywhere who will have me. So I go and talk to the Rachel Club and Mother's Union, all sorts of other people. And uh, I usually sort of give advance warning that uh, if people want to donate materials such as old buttons or zips or paper, whatever it is, that we'll be very glad of those. And uh, so we've been very fortunate that over the years people have given us a lot of lovely old buttons. And we are sharing them with you. So I hope that you enjoy using them as much as we do. I love to think about the social history of these buttons. You know, who's worn them? What outfits have they been on? What occasions are they at? Um, something rather nice about reusing something that somebody else has, uh, has worn at some point in history. And some of these buttons are very old. If you look carefully in your kit, you'll find quite a few of these lovely mother of pearl handmade buttons, some of which could easily be over 100 years old. So that's quite exciting. So get your canvas out, get your buttons and your other bits out and your lovely tree trunk. Now this has been die cut um, using uh, hand operated die cutting machines by different able people who come to our sessions. So get yourself a nice good strong glue stick. Um, I'm using one here that's a, a permanent one so I know it's not going to fall off once it's in my frame um, but any nice strong glue will do. So get me glue all over that. And believe it or not this has been cut from a recycled road blind. So there we go. So I'm just going to place that there and actually before you put the glue on that you might just want to move things around a bit just to test where you want them. I've distracted myself by chatting to you so I haven't checked that so I'm just hoping it's going to be in the right place. So there is my tree. Before I go any further let's just check that is in the right spot. Again in your kit you've got this really really beautiful antique handmade crocheted lace. This again has been donated to us by some of the lovely people who come to our talks but a lot of it also has come from our wonderful volunteers who come to our um, Friday sessions in Horsforth. We have this incredible team of ladies who come along and share their skills and support the differently able participants who come to the sessions and uh, many of them have brought along some of the old lace that's been in their family for a while that they've not been able to use and uh, so again we're able to share it with you it's something that has taken some lady at some point in history literally days and days and days and days of work so do you treat it you know with the respect it deserves and I hope that you'll keep your finished picture for a long time and just really love it and really value all the work that's gone into that so I've worked out where I want it to be I've covered up the base of the tree trunk there that's worked out perfectly so I find the best way to fix this down is to use spray glue and I've got some here that I just uh, bought very easily online um, if you can find it in your local high street even better if you haven't got spray glue and uh, you've just bought your kit you've got home and you just want to use it straight away I can really sympathize with that feeling um, I'd be just the same you can use something like PVA that's like the white school glue or any sort of fabric glue and just a little tiny paintbrush you just want to make sure you've got little tiny spots of glue all over that lace just enough to hold it in place but not to saturate it that's the great thing about the spray glue. You just literally coat the whole thing in a very fine layer of glue. It's not gonna seep through to the front and it's gonna hold it perfectly in place. So let's give that a good shake and spray it all over a little bit more. That's not gonna harm that lace in any way. It's just gonna stick it down exactly where we want it. So let's bring our canvas back. Now, of course, I'm doing this upside down uh, for the benefit of the camera. 
So I hope it looks all right the right way up from where you are viewing this. So I'm just going to lay this lovely antique lace down on here. And the nice thing about the spray glue is that it is a little bit repositionable while it's still wet. So I can move this about and just sort of smooth it out so that I haven't got any big lumps or bumps in it anywhere. And just press it down with the flat of your hands. Obviously wash your hands before you handle this lace um, so that it doesn't get marked. Um, I've been doing some dyeing yesterday so my hands look a little bit grubby but they are in fact spotlessly clean. It's just that I've managed to dye them with uh, dye from yesterday's activities. So there we go, I've covered that there. And just to be sure that things are in the right place, every now and again get the mount that comes with your frame, that came with your kit, and just lay it on top and just make sure, yes that's fine, um, I haven't got any bits of grey showing at the bottom there once I've got the mount on and that's where I want it to be. Uh, I've decided to do mine slightly over to one side, you might want it in the middle, all sorts of different ways that you could do it. So move the mount again. So now I'm just going to have some fun arranging my buttons and I really suggest that again don't glue anything down straight away. Put some nice music on, have a glass of something and just enjoy the process of working with these buttons. So just dot them around wherever you want them to be and so you can see a couple of other examples there to give you an idea and as well as the buttons you've also got these other lovely elements. We've got some hearts, we've got some little tiny flowers, there are some leaves in there and uh, it's just really nice to dot them around. If you've got some tiny buttons you could put a little tiny button in the centre of one of your flowers if you wanted to. So arrange the buttons how you would like them to be and um, I find again that this permanent glue stick actually works fine to glue them down so just put plenty of that on the back of the button and stick it firmly in place. Again you could also use PVA glue or Yoohoo or anything strong and just follow the instructions on the back. So when you've finished arranging all your buttons just lay your mount on the top, check that you love it, trim off the little bits of lace that might be sticking out at the side, keep those for something else, you probably have some buttons left again, keep those for another project and then put it inside your frame and you will have something that looks like this which really is an heirloom piece full of beautiful vintage elements that you can treasure or give to somebody else who will treasure it for many years to come. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Do you have a look at the website? As I say, in your kit is a leaflet about craft aid, which will tell you a little bit about what we do and some of the people that we work with. But have a look around the rest of the website and find out some of the stories of the people and the lives that are transformed by the work of Craft Aid International in the UK and in the developing world. Thanks very much.